I was trying to say that we're, the Amalekites with which we're dealing today are much worse than the Amalekites of old, right? What did say about King Agag? What, what was his uh, last words? Yeah, sar What does that mean? Okay, Shmuel said, "Hagishu elai et Agag melachamalek." Because I'll make a drush about Hagishu and the, the word the like shasef, Shmuel Agag. So it means that he cut him up into pieces and fed him to the, the animals. I always, there's a machlokis there. What was Agag saying? The, the bitterness of death has been removed or has removed itself. It's, it's, it's been, it's gone. So, no, the sar, sar means it has gone. It has, it has left. No, I was in, okay. Sar, Marhamal. Oh, well, nope, because that, that would be the sin, not with, with Samir. Oh, they don't mean Samir? No, and I think, uh, and I think that, uh, Jonas and also notes that doesn't mean Sar, you know, Mr. Like, officer. No. 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 no, Shmuel said, Hagishu Eli Agag. By the way, that's a in verb, as I mentioned before, normally the Kichu or Haviu. Hagishu is more like what you do when you bring like, food on a platter. Okay? So that's why you have the, the brushes there, Pazal. So he was saying, it's Machlokas the Rishonim. I like the Rishonim who say that. He was basically saying, I don't taste the bitterness of death. Like, you know, this this isn't going to hurt me. He is defiant. And that's why it says Ma'adanot. He's walking like without a care in the world. There are Rishonim who point this out. Why don't I like that shot? Because that would fit with the behavior of today's Amalekites, also, who declare openly when they're not afraid of death. We like, we, we, we love death more than you love life. So basically saying, you can't kill us. I remember Rabbi Khan in New York back in the into Fada days. This is like in 2002. He just gave a drush. He was like very fiery about saying. He said that the one person you can't stop is the suicide bomber because he's giving his life. He he, he, he he has the most guts. He will not be stopped. He's already giving his life for this type of thing. The kamikaze you know, is the most un, un, uh, is the strongest weapon that they have. So that's basically what Agag was saying. And that you can also what? Well, yeah, we make it a religious principle. Well, we survived so long because of them, but it hasn't been a good survival. Uh, yeah, you're not going to find it there. There's very few Jews. Although I was reading this about a Jew who gave his life for something, you're talking about Kiddush Hashem and giving your life for what would be an Avera, okay, or a bit of say. There's a story of Max Redlich. I don't know what exactly has happened in the in Krakow. Max Redlift was basically like the uh, the Bugsy Siegel of Krakow jewelry in World War II. He was a mobster. He was not a firm guy at all. And in one of the actions, okay, one of the grum actions of the SS in the destruction of Krakow, not before they totally destroyed it, but one of like the early things he did to just like teach and use a lesson was round up a whole bunch of Jews from the street, Jews who were not observant, and bring them in just as Mar of time was happy, and like the, the Jews who were Davi Mar, the, the Orthodox Jews, were in Krakow's Great Synagogue. And one of them was this Jewish mobster they happened to have gotten. And as part of their whole stick it to the Jews type of thing, they took out the Sefer Torah, unrolled it on the, on the floor, and wanted to march the Jews past the Sefer Torah and spit on it. Every Jew had to spit on it, Orthodox or non Orthodox. That was their thing. So many of them just did because they thought that's the same thing the Germans you know, have done, done to them, just go along with this parade, spit on the Torah. You know, directly on the Ksav, and uh, maybe that will save them. So this mobster, I think, was the last one he refused. He confessed in front of them, I've done a lot of bad things in my life. You know, I've done everything wrong. I will not do this. He felt, so, you know, he heard Shuva, and he was the first one to be killed. And then they killed the rest of them, of course, and they burned out the, the shul. But, so that, that's an example of someone who, well, wait a second, is there an issue to spit on the Sacred Torah? He didn't violate a law. Maybe he should have given his life that we talked about last week. But the answer is the halacha says that when it's shasa shmad, and they tell you, remember, you know, the shoelace thing, they tell you to violate any isser. Really, the 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 Romans or the Germans, they don't know shokharar. They don't know what's an actual isser of the Torah and what's not. Okay? They assume that what they're making you do is an isser. And you have guys like this Max, uh, let's say Red Lift, who was also not learned at all, for all he knew, yes, this is an Isser. Maybe it's not. Well, what is he supposed to think? Just no, there's no Isser of spitting on the Sacred Torah you know, in, in, on the books. 
technically speaking, maybe if you needed to save your life, you could do such a thing. But that's not the point. The point is, the Germans thought they were getting Jews to do something that was a major act of sacrilege, and the Jews here perceived it as such, so giving their lives for such a thing was the right thing to do when the test came. And even though many of them did not pass the test initially, see that the big Russia, through his tshuva, did. Okay, did pass the test, and he was the first to give his life on Kiddush Hashem. So uh, that brings us to this thing. So Shmuel told Agag, what was his retort? So Shmuel said, what? Asher shikala nashim karbetha came tishkal minashim imetha. Oh yeah? Well, your mom. What was he saying? You might not feel so much pain out of what's going to happen to you, but your mother's going to feel it. Okay? Your mother deserves it. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Basically saying that, yeah, look, you should still feel bad about something. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to make someone feel the pain of what I'm about to do. Your mother will feel it. The problem is with today's Amalekites, you see them, the mothers of the terrorists, the relatives, they hear that one of theirs was killed, you know, he even blew himself up on his way to try to kill Jews, and they still celebrate, oh good, he's a martyr. So even that, they, they, they're, they're worse than, than Agag. When Agag was executed, his mother was upset. Lama uh, Davar Cicero. Cicero was also a despoiler of the Jewish people. He used to say, and then Deborah's song, it talks about how Cicero used to boast about all the different uh, booty he would take in battle, right? And also the women captives he would have. But then, at the very end, Cicero ain't coming home. From his final battle, his mother's crying in the window, you know, where's my son? Where's my son? Then he stick it to his mom. Cicero was, you know, killed summarily by a woman of valor. But his mother was the one who really felt it. So that was a good thing. But what the problem is, nowadays we have these forces of evil, and, uh, and uh, yeah, they, they don't feel it.